Hey everyone, it's Robin R. Silent Crafts and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how I make my bowl cozies. Now I do have a live stream video that you can watch that goes into a little bit more of a discussion about it, but I realized I don't have a standalone video. So I wanted to make a bowl cozy video so if you need to come back and refer to it like I sometimes do, you don't have to fast forward and rewind through a long live stream. You can just come straight to this video. I will go ahead and and pin in the first comment of the comment section that live stream video so if you'd like to go back through and just hear the discussion and I also in that video show you how to round your corners. Bowl cozies are relatively quick to make you just need a couple pieces of fabric and a couple pieces of batting and a little bit of time and you'll have a wonderful gift for your friends and family. Let's get started. Our supplies for this project are very simple, but very specific. We are going to need our sewing thread, two pieces of cotton fabric cut at 10 inches, and two pieces of cotton batting cut at 10 inches. Now I'm using two pieces of the same fabric, but you can use two different fabrics if you choose. You just need to make sure that everything has to be 100% cotton, including your thread. Your fabric can't have any of the little bits of metallic in it or the glitter, and your batting can't have any of that scrim, which is a type of glue that they use to hold certain battings together. There is a 100% cotton batting with no scrim, or you can buy the special zap and go batting or something it's called, and it's meant specifically to go in the microwave. We can set our regular fabrics aside for a second. We're gonna work with our batting. We're gonna make a few marks on our batting that's going to help us to put our quilting lines in, create our darts, and then we'll sew it together. If you're gonna be making more than one, you can either purchase a template or a special ruler for the bowl cozies. I created my own out of a Dollar Tree cutting board. They come two to a pack, and they are sized just right for 10 inch squares. This just makes it really quick and easy to draw the darts when you're going to be making these. I'm going to mark both pieces of batting the same exact way. To start with, we need to draw a line from corner to corner diagonally. I'm just using your basic simple Bic pen. You can use whatever you'd like to mark it. I find that using something that's other than like a Sharpie marker or some type of a pen that tends to be very liquidy and takes a little bit to dry, only because as we're moving our ruler around, it tends to smear and gets on the ruler and gets on your hands. So you can use any type of a sewing marking tool or just your basic pen. The diagonal lines are our quilting lines. If you're an experienced stitcher, you can just stitch right down without drawing the lines. Just eyeball it from corner to corner, totally up to you. And repeat for the second one. The batting does tend to wiggle and move a little bit. I find it's easier for me. I start somewhere near the center and draw my lines outwards that way. That way I'm not dragging the corners of the batting in when I'm doing this. We also need to go at the halfway point and draw a cross in it. Now since my square is 10 inches, I can just line it up at five inches here, draw a line there. Repeat for the second one. Now this cross line is what's gonna help us create our darts. Now for the basic bowl cozy that is just the average one that everyone is making for your basic kitchen bowl, we're going to mark an inch on either side of this line. So you can line it up wherever you want to put an inch right on that line, I have three inches on mine, so I will mark it four inches and two inches, just so that it is one inch on either side of that drawn line. And you're gonna repeat that on all of your cross markings. And to mark the bottom of the dart, we're gonna to wanna to go down two and a half inches from the top of our batting and just make a little line there on our cross. See right there, just two and a half inches straight down on the line. And you will mark that in all eight spots. So then you just keep marking that 
on both pieces of batting. Just make sure you mark it at two and a half inches so that all of your darts are the same. Once we have that done, we're gonna play connect the dots. We're gonna go from the two and a half inch mark and we're gonna draw a line to the one inch and then to the one inch. And that's gonna give us that triangle piece for our darts. See how that is there. And again, mark it on both of them all the way around. So now you can see we have everything marked. We are only going to be paying attention to this diagonal line and then our darts. We no longer need the rest of that cross. So put your fabric wrong sides up and put your batting down on each piece so that you can see all of the markings. I like to add four pins to mine just to hold it in place to keep it from moving. If you don't have a problem with your batting and your fabric moving, you can just go ahead and skip that. I just made sure that I didn't go anywhere near the diagonal line so that I don't have to move them while I'm sewing. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch on that X. Straight down that way and then straight down that way. So you're going to have an X on both of them. I'm going to use an orange thread so that it kind of matches or you can use any thread that you want. It can be something that highlights it or something that matches it. I just want to hold my batting and my fabric together so that it's easier to use as a bowl and once you start washing it, it won't separate and the batting won't bunch up in weird places. If you'd like, you can use a walking foot or just go ahead and use your standard sewing machine foot. When you make your stitching line, you can go ahead and use a specialty stitch if you'd like, just to add a little bit of fun to it. Our next step is going to be making the darts. We wanna match up this point here with this point. So bringing it right sides together so that our darts on the inside can line it up at the corner. Here's your point. Then just follow to see if that line matches up with the same line on that side. You put a pin or a clip in it to hold it. I like to pop a clip in it just so that I can do some assembly line sewing and just do one right after the other. It's really great if you're making multiple bowls for gifts and you're making more than just one. So I will continue to clip all of these and those. You can already start to see your bowl taking shape. So I have both of them done the same way. And when I take it to the sewing machine, I'm going to use the same stitch length that I've been using all the way throughout, a 2.0. You want to stitch from one point to the other, back stitching at both ends. This end right here is the most important. If you want to just sew off that end, that's okay. For me, I find it's easiest to start here back stitch and then sew off the end. That way I don't have to worry about making sure I've caught both pieces and if they're not crooked, because I'm starting right at the fold and then I get that back stitch. And I will do that to all four on this one and all four on this one. So I have all eight darts sewn for, for each portion of my bowl. Leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance, you can use a ruler and a rotary cutter if you like, but I just try to be careful and I trim it a little bit extra so that we don't have that bulk inside our bowl. Then they need to be placed right sides together. We just popped this one this way. Line up the corners and line up your little darts. I like to put a clip or a pin in each of the corners. Because of the shape of the bowl with the darts, I find it easier if I go ahead and pin or clip it just to hold it together so when I'm at the sewing machine, I don't have to mess with it at all. And then I will also go ahead and I will do the darts. I'll put one of the seams to one side and one to the other. In quilting, we call this nesting our seams because they are gonna settle down, nest right into each other, and you can feel that they're interlocking and there's not that much bulk there. pin or clip each of your darts. Now you can add more pins or clips if you'd like. I find it's okay. I don't mind having to adjust a little bit as I'm stitching through there. 
The next thing we do is we're going to stitch around this outer edge a quarter inch seam allowance to maybe a three eighths inch seam allowance, but we need to leave an opening about an inch and a half or two inches. And I like to leave mine in between a dart and a point because it would be hard to flip it and turn it if we did it right at a dart and it would be even harder right there at that point. You could put a couple extra pins here or mark it like that. I'm going to start just before this dart back stitch and then I will stitch all the way around pivoting at the corners so you're going to go down just a little bit because it takes it down into that V but if you straighten it out just a bit like that you can see you can go almost perfectly straight so you just go down here and when you hit that stitching line you just pivot and go back up there hit the stitching line again and pivot and come down there so go all the way around and leave that opening there is my opening stitched all the way around. I remove some of this extra batting and fabric from the corners just to keep the bulk out so that when I turn around the corners, they won't be a little weird misshapen things. So I trim mine close to the line, but not super close. I don't want to have to worry about those threads breaking or anything happening where I might accidentally cut into it. So have to reach into the inside. You can use hemostats if you'd like. I go back to one of the corners back there so I can just pull that out and start the process. You don't want to pull too hard because you don't want to tear your stitches. This is why we back stitched at the beginning and the end so that while turning this out the right way we don't pop those stitches. If we popped them we would just have to have a bigger hole to stitch close. If you went past the corner or you went into the dart area, then you would just take it back to your sewing machine and restitch it. You can use anything that's not super sharp to pop out your corners. I just use a size K crochet hook. There are point turners that you can purchase, and I'm just being careful. I don't want to force it all the way through. Like some people like to use a pair of scissors if your tip isn't super sharp, but I tend to push that all the way through. I never really get my corners out to be super sharp with all that extra batting and such in there. I'm just happy if it's just a little bit rounded and I don't have a big dimple in that area. So it really looks like a big mess. I take it over to my pressing area, match it up, roll it down a little bit so you have your seam right on the edge. Give it a good steamy press. Tucking in this section here as you go. You can put some pins or clips in there. When I take this over to my iron and press it, I tend to just put my hand in here and find this little section there so I can put my iron in and give it a nice press. And I just work my way around. It's really a little bit difficult to hit every single spot. So you just wanna hit as much as you can to make it easier for your next step. Now we're going to go ahead and stitch around this and get it all closed up. You do have a bit of bulk in here, so some machines might have a little bit of a problem. If your machine doesn't like stitching through all this, you can just hand stitch this closed right here, your little opening from when we turned it. Hand stitch that closed and that'll work. By putting the top stitch along here about an eighth of an inch, depending on how wide your seam allowance is, you just need to make sure you're closing up this hole. And just like when we stitch the two pieces together, we will stitch around here. When we hit these little pivot points, we'll just pivot and keep working our way around our bowl and then back stitch when you get to the end. There you go. All stitched around. You can do a fancy stitch around there, but sometimes stitching around these bowl cozies is the one thing that the most people I talk to struggle with. So it might just be easiest to do a straight stitch and save any fancy quilting for another project or for the X. Then you just put your bowl in. That's going to help you shape it. And then you can always tuck down your little edges and then that gives you your bowl cozy. So again, it's reversible. I have the same fabric on both sides, but maybe if you want to make it last a little longer in between washes, you can switch to the other side. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Your scrappy word for today is orange. 
Thanks for hanging out with me, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!